Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie. These are the 12 best bourbons to drink in 2023. Liquor.com has a list out there called the 12 best bourbons to drink in 2023. We thought we'd take a look at it, see if we agree or disagree. Mm -hmm. They are categorized, although the categories aren't real clear. They don't say who this list is actually made for. So we're going through this list sort of as a... Would we do this list this way ourselves? Right. (laughs) Yeah. So if you are a bourbon enjoyer, maybe your palate is coming along, you're learning what you like, and you need some recommendations for something new to try this year, or maybe you're just new to bourbon and looking for the 12 things that you ought to pursue this year, we're just going to go down this list and see... What do we think of it? I'm excited. All right, here we go. We're going to dig in, and they started at the very top of their list with best overall. Oh, for you're not even finishing with that one. Seems we're, like That so, seems like the finisher. So we're starting at the top, <laughs> apparently, and their best overall. The reason that we're really doing this video is because I, I read this and I got a little upset right off the bat. <laughs> it's Henry McKenna 10. Hmm. It's a single barrel bourbon. It got gold at the San Francisco Spirits competition in 2019, and it went from being a $30 bottle to, locally... 75. 75. Yikes. I know it's 10 years aged, I know it's good whiskey, but that's a little outrageous, and it is a bit polarizing. Not everybody likes that bottle. Right, and the availability can be quite brutal, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, we have gotten a single barrel on our shelf recently. Mm hasn't been winning blinds for us. Matter of fact, it's kind of gotten beaten up in a couple of blinds because there's a variance. So, all right, McKenna 10, that's the best overall for them. We're gonna give you what we think is the best overall bottle that is worth a shot and it's a little more available for you out there, we think. It's Wilderness Trail Bottled in Bond Bourbon and we like the rye mash bill. The wheat mash bill also very good, so if you can find one or the other, give them a shot. Usually 55 to $65 depending on where you're at and so you might save yourself some money. You will certainly save yourself some heartache in trying to find a really difficult to track down bottle. And it could be something new for you and so I feel like this is a great choice for best overall whatever that category is that we're talking about today. (laughs) Yeah, much more available out there. And it performed so well in our Advent tournament, had surprising flavors. And we think that's why this is a bottle that's worth looking out for. Mm -hmm. Those flavors include green fruits like kiwis, maybe cantaloupe, musk melon. We kind of were all over the place on our tasting notes. All we really know is we like it. That's right. What's the next category? Value buy. Nice, I love a good value. There's a ton of them out there. This is another kind of an oddball that they threw out there. I don't inherently disagree with this one. Mm -hmm. It's just a strange one because you're talking more than $20 and you're talking sometimes well over $20, Mm -hmm. although it's wildly popular and we can see why they recommend it. It's Maker's Mark. Oh, I do like Maker's Mark. Just Maker's Mark bourbon right off the shelf. Runs about $25, $26. Sometimes you can find it for less. Now we like that whiskey a lot. Totally. It's not usually my go-to makers, for sure. I'm not sure I've had it in quite some time, to be honest. Yeah, I'll order if I see it behind a bar somewhere and they don't have much of a selection and it's affordable. Yes. Sure. I don't have a problem with makers at all, but we're going to go a different route with this one. For us, it's Evan Williams 1783. It is a beautiful bottle. Mm -hmm. You can drink it straight up. You can put it on the rocks if you want. I love mixing it in cocktails. It's just an all-around great bottle and super value. Yeah, by the way, for 750 milliliters, you're paying 20 bucks for that bottle. We just got a (laughs) 1.75 mil for $35. You better believe we picked it up. Mm, You know we did. Well-aged oak, vanilla, brown sugar, and I get coconut on that bottle. I don't know if everybody else does. I don't think so, but what I get from that bottle, I really, really like. For 20 bucks, I think it's an extreme value. It's the same proof as Maker's Mark, so Maker's Mark available everywhere. Evan Williams 1783, we're seen in a lot of places, so hopefully you can find that one. If you haven't tried it, it's worth a shot. So the next category is the sipping whiskey, and I'm not 100% sure what that means because don't you sip all of your whiskey? Yeah, what the heck is a sipping whiskey? (laughs) Interesting category that doesn't really get explained, but they go with Widow Jane 10. A blended whiskey comes from three different states, costs about $75 locally here. I get that it's 10 years aged, but what are they getting at with that sipper category? I'm just thinking, like, are they talking about 
the ease of drinking, like the that the smoothness, smoothness, yeah, or the flavors. It's just a broad, and I guess all of these are just broad ca- categories with not a lot of you know bullet points underneath them. So right. I'm not a hundred percent sure where we're going. So we have two thoughts on this one. One is a little higher proof. One is a little bit lower proof, depending on what sipping means to you. And <laughs> if you are looking for a bottle that has some heft to it, that has a ton of flavor that you can drink on the rocks or over a big ice cube. To me, that's what sipping would indicate. Mm-hmm. Wild Turkey Rare Breed, it's sweet, it's mm-hmm. spicy, it has knocked out some major competition in blinds that we've done. And around here, we're getting that bottle around $48, but we wait for it to go on sale because you usually get five bucks off on that one. We know some of you are getting it for more or less than that, but it's a delicious bottle. It's always on the shelf here. Mm-hmm. Most of the bourbon drinkers that we talk to, it's one of their go-tos and they've always got it on the shelf. So if you haven't tried Rare Breed, that seems like a sipper to me. No argument here. And if you haven't tried drinking it outside, I think that's where the flavors really shine. Yeah, go outside, sit on your porch, drink your whiskey, and judge your neighbors, or invite them over to have a sip with you. And the other bottle that we want to talk about, Knob Creek 12, 100 proof, runs about $70 here locally. So if you really want to spend that 70 to 75 bucks, this is a good opportunity to do it. Jim Beam, definitely not for everybody, but There are a ton of people who really like Knob Creek, and this Knob Creek 12 has proven itself in flights to be much, much better than some of the other whiskeys that we've put up against it. It's flavorful, it is sweet, it is smooth, and for $70, you're getting something that's aged 12 years. So if the reason they're recommending Widow Jane 10 year as a sipper is because it's so well aged and easy to drink, we think Knob Creek 12 can do that even better. So check that one out if you haven't. We know that's a pricey bottle. A lot of people have been avoiding it because of the price. We avoided that one for a while for the same reason, and uh, now it's on the shelf. Tell me about cocktails. Cocktail whiskey. This is a really interesting one because they went with what I think is a bit of a strange decision. They went with Michter's Bourbon. Huh. I don't know if I've ever tried that in a a cocktail, to be honest. (laughs) Michter's Bourbon around here sells for about $40. Eight dollars, mm-hmm. I believe. It's not the cheapest whiskey. Certainly not the cheapest whiskey to put in a cocktail. Right. They recommend it because it stands up flavor-wise in cocktails, and that we definitely get. Yep. But we have a hard time spending almost fifty dollars on a bottle and then mixing it. So the bottle we like for cocktails is literally half the price. We are drinking Old Forester 100 proof. Old Forester products, you're getting some nice oak, nice vanilla, some cherry, maybe some banana. On this product, we actually find a little bit of maple syrup. You don't find that in all the Old Forester products. Mm -hmm. And it's 100 proof, stands up well in cocktails, and gives you something a little bit extra. So we generally drink rye in a lot of our cocktails. Well, that's what I was going to say. I guess this category depends on what cocktail you're making, because if we're talking old fashions, I love a rye in there kind of love an Evan Williams 1783 in there. Exactly. So it's kind of a toss-up. <laughs> yeah, this one could go a lot of different ways. We just thought it was a little strange that they went with something as pricey as a Michter's mm-hmm. for a mixer. We like that bourbon. We think it's a great sipper. Again, sip it outside next to a fire. It's great. <laughs> just a little strange in this category, I think. So next up is the best bottle under $50. We don't disagree with them on this one. It's <laughs> Four Roses Single Barrel, we were buying that for right around $50. It's, I think, over $50 now, so mm-hmm. it has to be disqualified, although we know some of you out there are getting it for less than 40 which is crazy, and if that's the case... Definitely well, pick it yeah, up. Yeah, by all means, we can't disagree with that. But there is one bottle that people are constantly asking us, what's the best bottle in the $35 to $45 range? Russell's Reserve 10. Yeah, you can't go wrong there. It's so good. Every time we put it in a blind, It does so well, like surprisingly well. It has dominated bottles that cost twice what it costs. Yeah. It's only 90 proof, but the flavor is incredible. We've put it up against other 10-year bottles, and it is overperformed to the point where it doesn't make any sense for us to not have that bottle on the shelf at all times. It's another wild turkey product, readily available. Most people love it. We know it's not for everybody. There's a little spice there, but that's nice to us because it tempers all that beautiful sweetness. It's a super well-balanced sipper. We absolutely love it, so best whiskey under 50 bucks. To me, that's a no-brainer. So next up is the under $100. It's kind of a big jump there. It's a big jump, and it's such a stupid category because (laughs) beauty is in the eye of the beholder on this one, and everybody's palate's different. It's so tough. You've got great whiskeys all up and down the shelf in that $55 to $65 to $75 Mm -hmm. range, so 
Their recommendation is one that I think is a little bit strange. It's Noah's Mill. It's mm -hmm. around 115 proof. We don't have a bottle of it, so I can't taste it. Yeah, I really have no reference point there because we've never had it. I can't disagree with it, but I also can't agree with it. It's a Will It product. Yeah. I'm sure it's good whiskey, Yeah. but it's so subjective that for this one, we're going to recommend two bottles. One of them goes right back under $50. It's Chattanooga 111. It's an interesting cask strength whiskey, 111 proof. It's only aged for a couple of years, but the flavors are enormous. It's unusual, it's unique, it's tasty, and it's available in a lot of the country. So the next one I really like, it's Baker 7. Yeah, if we were going to have a second choice here, if you just had to spend more than $50, <laughs> we think Baker 7 is a really, really solid whiskey. It's done well in plenty of blinds for us. It has one blinds, it has one head-to-heads. It performed really well in our Advent tournament. No surprise, age 7 years, 107 proof, super satisfying, a great nose. The finish lasts an eternity. The palate is absolutely exquisite. <laughs> and if you're going to be somewhere in that $60 range, you don't want anything too high proof, but you want something with a little body and some strength to it, Baker 7, you could do a lot worse. And like we said in a lot of videos, that $65 price range, there's just so much good stuff. Like I could probably talk for hours on Old Force in 1910 and 1920. So many other bottles that just range in there. You don't have to spend up to that hundred dollars to get a really amazing bottle and sometimes those pricier ones don't always pan out yeah we bought a couple of 90 dollars dogs <laughs> so next up a great category barrel strength barrel strength bourbon and uh, again we can't argue with this one elijah craig barrel proof 70 ish 75 dollars maybe more maybe less depending on where you're at we know it's not available everywhere but no complaints that's good that's a quick one we're gonna call that one one and done yeah that's it's good there's a lot of barrel strength out there that's great that option terrific yeah if you've never tried elijah craig barrel proof <laughs> it is the bourbon that really opened my eyes that there were flavors that i was missing and perfect then for new drinkers who want to get into barrel strength absolutely next up is the weeded bourbon i like those you're not the biggest fan but we can't complain about their selection either. Yeah, they recommended Wyoming Whiskey Small Batch. Runs about $50. It's under 90 proof. We can't deny Wyoming Whiskey's great. We like all their stuff. For sure. But we do have an alternate recommendation. And this is one that we see everywhere. We talk about it all the time. We say it's great for beginners. Mm -hmm. We still drink it all the time. We'd like to think that we have fairly seasoned palates, or at least we drink a lot. <laughs> It's Makers 46. I love Makers 46. And earlier in this video, we talked about baseline makers and I'm always somebody to say, if you're gonna spend the money for makers, spend a little bit extra and get the 46. You will not be disappointed. Right, rich and caramely and sweet and balanced. And there's something so decadent about the mouthfeel on that whiskey. You're getting a lot for 35-ish dollars. That's a great bottle. We really can't recommend it enough. We talk about it all the time, and we're going to keep talking about it. We're talking about it right now. Sometimes weeders can get a little funky, a little farmy, and that kind of turns people off. Not this girl. She no. loves that. It just hits our palates perfectly. I can't argue with that. Next up, it's kind of an unusual and relatively, I think, new category for bourbon. Estate spirits. Huh. So estate bourbon is, think of it like a state wine where the grapes are grown on the property and then turned into wine right there. It doesn't happen everywhere, obviously, but in craft whiskey, that's kind of what we're talking about these days. There are some great ones out there and their recommendation we can't argue with at all. They're talking about Frey Ranch bourbon, the 90 proofer from Fallon, Nevada. You already know if you watch our channel that we are big Frey Ranch fans and we can't say enough about the way that they operate over there. Everything is done in house. Mm -hmm. They grow the grains, produce the product, and then they recycle the grains right out into their own farm. It's all done right there and we cannot deny this one. Frey Ranch is a great choice for this. I love Frey Ranch. Their whiskey is just plain different and that makes me so excited to try Try a new edition every time it comes out. They also sell their whiskey online, mm -hmm. so you can go to their website, and if you live in a state that allows shipping, you can have it shipped. One thing that I always recommend, though, we're talking about bourbon right now, their rye is stellar. They have a bottled and bond rye that's an absolute crusher for 60 bucks. So if you're gonna get one, you should get the other. Go ahead and get the two pack, it's worth it. So this is the eco-conscious category. I don't disagree with them here either. What they're going with is Redwood Empire Pipe Dream. I think it's a fantastic choice. For each bottle that Redwood Empire sells, they plant a tree. How nice is that? I love it. I 
just makes my heart happy. <laughs> and I'm a big outdoors person. I love getting lost in those trees. So maybe I should buy some more uh, Redwood Empire. The one weird thing about this one, though, they're planting a tree, but they're also sourcing whiskey from, I believe, four different states. Mm. So you're shipping an awful lot of whiskey and then shipping it back out once it's been right. back. Okay, maybe it's not the most eco-conscious, but we like what they're up to. Absolutely. And the bottle designs are cool and... They obviously have their hearts in the right place, and I can't really disagree with this one. Though from an eco standpoint, our own Oregon spirit right here in Bend, Oregon, deserves a shout out. All of the whiskey is made from grains that are right here in the Pacific Northwest, and they take special care to be as eco-conscious as possible at their distillery. So mm -hmm. Oregon spirit and their bourbon or their bottled and bond bourbon, definitely worth a look if you want to support a company that is very eco-conscious about the way that they do their business. And by the way, that bottled and bond bourbon, it's pretty good. And you know how much we love rye, the rye stellar. Yeah, they have great rye. Next up, it's the best bourbon from Kentucky. How do you even make that decision? <laughs> We're going to do it the same way that they did it, which Perfect. is based on price, I suspect, yes. and what you're getting for your money. They recommend Evan Williams Single Barrel. Okay, perfect. That's around $30, $35. In this area, it's around $30, I believe. Yeah. I don't have a huge problem with that mm -hmm. because you're getting some bang for your buck, but 90 proof... It's a little spicy for my palate. I mm. like it. I don't love it. And there's one bottle that comes to mind that's in that price range that I think you get a big bang for your buck. It's not available everywhere, but I love this one. It's Cooper's Craft Barrel Reserve. It is 100 proof. They etch some notches in the side <laughs> of the barrel so you get some extra oak action there. If you're an oak fan like I am, it's a great bourbon and brown sugar, vanilla, oak. What more could you really want from your bourbon? The flavors are straight ahead delicious new bourbon drinkers old bourbon drinkers everybody seems to love cooper's craft barrel reserve and i certainly do yeah i think it's a great choice i'm also a little relieved that we're going to kind of categorize this one in that similar price point because it is an impossible category to choose from i mean Everybody watching this video knows how delicious Kentucky bourbon is. Yeah, what are you going <laughs> to You can wander through Louisville and pick a different bourbon from every distillery you walk into that could probably fit this category. And be your new favorite. So last category, best Tennessee bourbon. So that takes out a lot of options that I was actually thinking about for this category. Yeah, this is a tricky one because Jack Daniels is out. Right. Dickel is mostly out, although their bourbon is very good. Very good. So let's start with what they recommend, which is Heaven's Door bourbon. I love Heaven's Door. I actually have no problem with this selection. You know, this one sells in the 50 to $60 range most places, so a little pricey, but we don't have a problem with it. It is very good. It's Bob yeah. Dylan's brand, so if you're avoiding it because it's a celebrity whiskey, Don't. It's delicious. It. Yeah. But we do like to give alternate options, so our alternate option is... Chattanooga. We've already talked about the 111. We love it. Get it. If it's in your area, put it on the shelf. But the bottled and bond is great. Mm -hmm. We've actually not had one Chattanooga that we have not liked. The Founders Edition. We've tried Scotch Finished. We've tried various <laughs> bottled and bonds. We've had the cask strength and we have not been let down. So mm -hmm. if you're specifically trying to stick with Tennessee bourbon, you can do a lot worse than buying anything from that Chattanooga lineup. But the Heaven's Door, also delicious. I love that brand. Not a bad pick at all. Well, there you have it. The top 12 bourbons to try in 2023. Again, we don't really know who this list is for, but we hope that we've been helpful to somebody yeah. out there and from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. And by the way, this is our new cat, Mavis, and she's so excited to meet all of you.